A quick word from Kevin Keegan. I know you're looking very much to see Peter Beardsley, your ex-Newcastle teammate, playing up front for England. Yeah, obviously, it's, it's lovely for me because if you go back two years, the England forward line it, it is, if you put me in place of Gary Lineker, it'd be the Newcastle side. Oh, Chris Buddle as well. That's right. Um, no one's more delighted than me for Peter Beardsley. Um, he's very unlucky to have to make his debut in Egypt. Difficult game, everyone expecting to score. I think tonight's a great, well, this afternoon's a great stage for him, really, to, to steal a place, not just in the England squad, but in the England side. He is that good. He's good enough to do that. And Waddle? Well, I, I mean, I'm, people are talking about should it be Waddle, should it be Barnes, should it be a winger at all? I, I've read this. Sir Alf Ramsey says that it should be Barnes. And that Barnes has had his opportunities. And he's done average. You can't say he's set the place on fire. Chris Waddle, for me, when he's played, has always shown a little bit more. And I think he's there on merit. Obviously, as a winger, you've always got to keep proving people because it's so easy to change a system and leave you out, as so Alf Ramsey did at the 66. So uh, I'm delighted for them both. I think, and of course they understand playing together. And with yeah. someone like Gary Lineker, yes. who's only half fit, that means he's about twice the speed of sound instead of yeah. three times. Yes. They've got a great forward line. I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing them play together. I think Mike Shunner, most people regard uh, Brian Robson as irreplaceable, probably. I mean, Gordon Cowan's has got the job now coming into the midfield. I mean, how do you see, for example, the midfield today? Well, I think that probably it's probably a weak England midfield, but uh, it's a great opportunity for everyone. Um, obviously, we're going to miss Brian Robson. I mean, he's a world-class player, and I think we'll miss Peter Reid as well. But uh, uh, um, Ray Wilkins, who, who's not my favourite player, is playing again, and, and it's good to see that Cowan's got a, an opportunity after breaking his leg a couple of times. He's a, he's a good player, I mean, and let's, let's hope it comes right from today. It's a great opportunity for, for, for the back four as well to establish himself. These, these games are important now. Yeah, Bobby Robson's saying he's looking for more pace from his central defenders. You know, that's right. I think that, I mean... You've either got pace or you haven't. I mean, and I think that probably that is that is our biggest weakness, our back four. And I think that uh, um, Butcher looked to be struggling. You know, I mean, I think he he's probably our best defender, but he, he looked to be struggling. Um, he's had a bad cartilage operation, and he's obviously not over his injury yet. And it's going to take him a little while to get back, but he should be back in time for the World Cup. And uh, let's hope Mark Wright can fit in. I always think that Mark Wright's a bit of a softy. That's my honest opinion of him. And. Uh, I mean, he's, he's good and comfortable on the ball, but he's not, a, he's not someone who's positive enough for me. He doesn't close people down and, and push people around, and, and he's not quite positive enough. And that's my only criticism of him. But I mean, we're getting to a time now, surely, where these sort of things have got to be sorted out. I mean, as I say, we're nine weeks away from, from hoping to set the world on fire in Mexico. Well, I think Bobby Robson tonight's got, uh, or this afternoon, I keep saying tonight, but this afternoon, got the chance. You know, he's looking for a little bit of help from somewhere because we haven't got a settled side and the World Cup is nine weeks away. And the, in tonight's team, he's got Cowens, who's got... All right, he may be without Robson. We all hope he won't be. He's got to look for an alternative. There is no direct replacement for a player of, of Brian Robson's class. So, you know, we haven't got a direct replacement, so you can't find one. And obviously, as I said, with Beardsley and, and, and Waddle, he's got the chance there to get other players taking the chance at this late stage. Right, great. at this late stage, then let's go across and join our commentary team in Tbilisi. Just starting there, David Sleet, the manager of Luton, and Martin Tyler. Thank you, Brian, and welcome to Tbilisi. The local time here is just 8 o'clock in the evening, four hours ahead of you. And it is a match which stands in its own right as a genuine international contest but has also to be assessed, as you've been saying in the studio, as part of the team-building process for Mexico, and that does apply to both nations here. Chivadze. England bringing into this game a seven-match unbeaten run, while the Soviet Union, defending the goal to the left in the first half, have a home record of extraordinary invincibility. They've won their last 18 major internationals in this vast country, and in those 18 games, the Soviets have not conceded a single goal. Would you believe it? So quite a task for England here. And here's Gordon Cowans wearing the number seven shirt vacated by Brian Robson. A touch from Kondratiev. It's likely that the Soviet team will play with just two men forward. The number 10, Kondratiev, and the number 11, Rodionov. England have gone solidly for a 4-3-3 plan. Staying with the services of Chris Waddle as a wide player, even though Gary Lineker and Peter Beardsley do lack height for any crosses that Waddle might play in. 
Semyonenko. Zavarov. It was Beardsley who went in firmly for England. Glenn Hoddle. It's an important night for Mark Wright. But behind him, of course, he has his club teammate Peter Shilton and Bobby Robson concerned about the lack of preparation again for his England side. He could only name the team at lunchtime today. And Ray Wilkins arriving here from Italy early yesterday afternoon along with Gordon Cowns and the injured Mark Hatley. So that was a surprise to all concerned here. It's a good crowd in this stadium that holds some 75,000 but they're treating the match with great respect so far. And it's rather eerie, the, the quietness. Chivadzi, the local player, the sweeper for Demianenko. Had a chance for the first thought from the Luton Town manager, David Fleet, alongside me. Well, early on, the Russians will just uh, bide their time and be patient. Chivadze is playing deeper behind any of the other defenders, and Beardsley, Waddle and Lineker are all being marked closely tight. Peter Beardsley jumping for England. Bugnoff, the big number five, who was probably selected to look after Hayfley. Foul by Glenn Hoddle. Viv Anderson getting another chance because of the injury to Everton's Gary Stevens. Cowens. Back from Ray Wilkins and Chris Waddle has to justify the role of the winger, really, with the time ticking away towards Mexico. Bobby Robson has said that he wants to play his first choice lineup against Scotland at Wembley on April the 23rd. Stefanov with a back pass. Much of the early sparring but it's typical, really, of international football. The tempo so different from English first division play. Zavarov. Here's Stefanov. To throw himself to the ground, and it didn't pull the Bulgarian referee, Belichko Sonchev. Bobby Robson really looking for three things he felt here. Pace in England's defending. Who can fill in when Brian Robson can't play? And to justify, as I was saying a moment or two ago, the role of the winger. And Chris Waddle finding himself in a central position. Sent long by Butcher. And Dasayev has come a long way under pressure from Waddle. Stefanov, given away by Alenikov, who wins it back. And Zavarov starting from midfield. Viv Anderson had to come across on the cover and did so effectively. Wilkins. A lot of the service for the front player has to be in now to their feet, as Lineker received it then. Stefanov. Run back by Towns. Now Wilkins. Beardsley, who had 35 minutes against Egypt in a full game against Israel. And he goes into this match tonight knowing really he's got to show his World Cup pedigree. On the left of the picture there, Eduard Malofiev, the Soviet coach and England have the corner they've had little opportunity really to rehearse their set plays 
Just one training session this morning with the full team available. Mark Wright looking to flick it on at the near post. Butcher jumping. Cowan. Wilkins has taken the corner and checked back to stay on the side. Butcher is the target. It's a nice ball by Hoddle. Waddle's cross. Butcher. And now Beardsley. And it was a shot from Cowan that was blocked. But potential here for a break by the Soviet Union. But the pass over hit by Zadarov. Keogi Kondraty at the furthest forward. And one remembers that England conceded a goal from their own corner in the early stages against Israel. Just a slight concern that they might be caught the same way then. Kuznetsov starting an international for the first time. Bethanov losing out to Cowens. Safely back by Ken Sanson. David, who's looked very energetic and spry in training here. Yeah, he's a, he's a public character, Kenny Sanson, and he's been full of beans. And I think he'll have an important part to play. Because if we do struggle to get the balls down the channels with their sweep covering the spaces, uh, Sanson and Anderson might be able to join in from behind. Well, Waddle having done well to win the ball, Lost out to Kuznetsov. Chivadze, the only player from Dinamo Tbilisi in the starting lineup. Indeed, in the squad of 21 that the Soviet Union have had preparing for this international. Preparing, incidentally, since Friday with all the players excused duty from their league matches last weekend. Perhaps there's a moral there. Ken Sanson with a long throw. Terry Butcher's come forward to flick it on and flick it on well. And Alenikov has to slice it behind for another England corner. Rinat Dasayev, a fixture these days in the Soviet Union goal. The goalkeeper, of course, in the 1982 World Cup finals with Gary Lineker right in on the line. England looked to vary the play, and it was aimed for Hoddle, but Zavarov was watching him. Beardsley nudging it on for Viv Anderson. And as Mark Wright was homing in, Bethanov there in the nick of time for the Soviet Union. Superb play that. We look far more composed at the moment than the Russians. Good ball by Anderson. Could have gone anywhere. And uh, Anderson and Sansom, as I say, can force the issue down the flanks. Wilkins, though, with not enough loft in the corner. But it was a very encouraging touch from Peter Beardsley to play Viv Anderson through then. Sanson's throw. Bethanov. Zavarov. Squeezed through by Gotsmanov, but well read by Butcher. And here's a positive start from England. Beardsley doing well again, brought down by Gotsmanov after the ball had gone. It does look a side capable here that Bobby Robson has chosen of keeping the ball if they can win it often enough. There's no genuine ball winner in midfield if one can categorize players like that but with Wilkins and Hoddle and Cowens all the potential there to turn possession to good advantage Lineker waiting in the middle again from the long throw which Dasaya deals with rather tentatively Butcher and a coming shot from Hoddle that had him dancing away in anticipation, he knew it was close, and it all came from the original long throw, with the Soviet Union looking positive in their defending against it. A definite look, look at you, the Soviets at the moment, and England have settled down awfully well. Bobby Robson is very, very pleased with the first few minutes.
Anderson. Well, at least he had a rest last weekend when others were on club duty because he was suspended and out of the Arsenal side. And Mark Wright, in fact, had a slight injury in this Southampton's home game against Chelsea. Anderson. Zabarov. Cowan spreading the play and Beardsley and Lineker working hard up front and Lineker's read the back pass from Kibetsu and was he brought down by the goalkeeper? The referee says no. England feel they should have had a penalty there. And the Soviet Union was caught when Chibadze played the ball back without looking and Gary Lineker full of running. He got a clear first touch and the goalkeeper definitely knocked him off his path. To me that's a penalty even though the ball may have been going away from the goal. Very unlucky but the two runs that Beardsley and Lineker made then to split were absolutely superb. We've got three front players who can all play the game to speed and their movement so far has been very good. And here's Waddle. 13 minutes gone. England filling the middle, and they have another corner. And it was Gordon Cowan sliding in, and he's had a couple of attempts on goal, with England looking to get goals from midfield in the absence of Brian Robson. Butcher, out by Alenikov. This time the free kick goes against England and against Glenn Hoddle in particular. So at the moment the game being played very much in the Soviet Union's half. And England certainly we feel very unlucky not to have had a penalty. Right header. I think Waddle has been given a fairly free roll. He's popping up on the right-hand side now. Certainly the longer-term plan very much in everyone's mind, but how good it would be here if England can come away unbeaten, keep their unbeaten run going, and look to carry it all the way to Mexico itself. France did a similar thing in the European Championships in 1984 and with their morale high of course they went on and won that particular tournament. A good opening 15 minutes for England and it's the Soviet Union nil, England nil. right across in front of Kondratiev. Rodionov, one of those who played at Wembley. That was back in June 1984, when the Soviets were very much the better team on the day. Right header only dropping as far as Semyonenko. Away by Cowans. Budnov. Kuznetsov. A lovely turn by Demyanenko, the Soviet player of the year. Gotsmanov, the player who was brought down. And the Bulgarian referee straight away pointed to the spot. Anderson on Gotsmanov. From Demyanenko's through pass. One can't help feeling he was a bit theatrical about that and he's got the benefit of the, uh, the Bulgarian referee's decision. I can't understand uh, Lineker not getting that one and then that one there. It's, uh, I've put, that's a shame. The tragedy for him when we started so well. And he's missed it. 
Maybe there's a moral in that somewhere. A shake of the head from the home base player. And England survive. Alexander Shibadze beat Chilton, but it rocketed out off the post. Particular relief for Viv Anderson and for the morale of England generally. Alenikov. Push in the back by Towns. Well, Chivadze, who's inspired Dinamo Tbilisi to European club wins over Liverpool and West Ham in past seasons, was a scorer in the World Cup against Scotland. Wasteful, though, of a great chance for the Soviet Union to turn the balance of the match this way by failing from the penalty spot. England were concerned in their preparatory talks about the width of the Soviet play, which was a factor in that 2-0 win at Wembley back in 1984. They do have pace, they do have tremendous teamwork from spending so much time together. They had uh, two months in their close season through the heart of our winter when they were away in Spain and in Mexico. But they lost the two full internationals played in that period. Beardsley, a neat touch for Hoddle. Good running again by Lineker. And it came just behind Towns. Zavarov again. And Demianenko. This is where the problems might come for England. The Gottsman off. Demianenko again. And it's another free kick conceded by Anderson. Right on the corner of the area, but this time just outside. Stella Demianenko, such a powerful player. I think he's Soviet answer to Peter Priegel. Massive power down the left, and he could cause problems to Hoddle and Anderson if we allow the ball to get out to that side too easily. He takes the free kick and picks up Gottsman off. Tremendous running, but England didn't pick up. And a corner to the Soviet Union. Kotsmanov was just loitering there and then darted away. And Wilkins colliding with Beardsley, but England survived. Zavarov. And England pushing up. The pass was a poor one in any case, but any... Uh, Soviet player running forward would have gone offside. The Soviets have just raised the tempo of the game a little bit in the last few minutes, possibly spurred on by the move that led to that um, penalty decision. But Malofiev, the manager, has been saying that what he wanted in a training session the other day was a little bit of a quicker tempo when they break into the middle third of the field. picked on by Waddle. Here's Chivadze, who is the free player at the back and can use that freedom to come forward and join in further forward. Bethanov. 
Zavarov. On from Alenikov, Kondratiev closely watched by Butcher, then Rodionov. But Shilton off his line quickly. So Bobby Robson has seen his side perform well going forward, but start to look a little vulnerable, particularly when England are defending on their right. Back from Pugnot. I think they'll be very wary with their back passes, uh, knowing now the pace of Lineker, he really has got uh, superb acceleration, and considering that he's been playing with a little bit of a pelvic problem recently, it's quite remarkable that the pace that uh, Lineker has. Well, Gary Lineker, I'm sure, would like to really stamp his award of PFA Player of the Year with a goal in this setting here. Being uh, hypercritical, I suppose, all his international goals so far have come against slightly weaker opposition. Peter Beardsley, of course, still looking for his first goal for England. Lineker with a hat-trick against Turkey and a couple against the United States. And his first goal came against the Republic of Ireland at Wembley. And here he is, with Waddle joining Beardsley in the middle, and Hoddle. It's Waddle jumping, and Wilkins looking to collect on the edge of the area, and squeeze the shot in, and has that by him, plunging to his left. That looks, from our angle, as though it might have trapped in, but for the goalkeeper. It certainly was a good effort, and he did well against Pugnoff, the big massive defender at the back post there. Waddle, he was quite brave there. Yes, I think it would have gone. Gassayev did well to get across. Right for England. Back for Butcher. Ray Wilkins close to breaking a long run without an international goal. Last one came against Northern Ireland more than four years ago. And here is the England captain. And it's Beardsley. By swinging himself at it, he forced the error by the defender Kuznetsov. And England have another corner. There's another superb run by Beardsley. He's probing all the time. He's giving Wilkins, Wilkins and Hoddle targets to hit. And that's the good thing. They're bright up front. They're making good moves. Butcher again joining Wright in the near post area. And Mark Wright got to it and in fact deflected it just too much. Hoddle. Alenikov. Easily picked off by Sansom. Zavarov. Forward from Rodionov, Kondratiev, and Rodionov, finally by Kuznetsov. The defender who did well to support his front players then, but Shilton not with a shot on target to deal with. Kuznetsov couldn't keep his effort down. The two teams have seen quite a lot of each other over the past three days. They've been sharing the same hotel. There's certainly been a Soviet presence at every England training session, so that hasn't upset Bobby Robson. Zavarov. Kuznetsov getting forward again, although this is best enough. And he is very much stronger on his right-hand side. And that effort would have been appreciated by Malofeya, the goal scorer himself in his playing days, a Russian international, 41 cap. A 
as you can see, the ball went straight out of play for a throw on the far side. Taken by Viv Anderson. Hoddle. Flick from Beardsley, and it's a good one too. Picking out Wilkins. Cowan with Sampson steaming up in support. Waddle checked in field. Here he is. And maybe Hoddle shot in the end. It's a little dink pass. Sampson is a judged offside, but that might have been a harsh decision. The ball was in the air quite a long time. The Soviet Union, in fact, have made six changes from the side which lost 1-0 in Mexico recently. Four of the players from Dynamo Kiev, three from Spartak Moscow, and three from Minsk. So there should be a good club feeling in their play. Bugnov. Kotsmanov. Two waiting for the cross. And the header from Kondratiev. Only passed a yard or so wide. Kondratiev had gone to the near post. Rodionov was checking out towards the far side. That's the problem, really, when you get forwards defending in deep positions. You beat Hoddle rather easily there. He's not a, a good defender, I don't think, Hoddle, to be fair. And in the previous attack, when the wild shot went in to the far side, it was Waddle who succumbed to a Soviet surge down on the right. They've got to be strong when they're challenging. The Russians are very, very powerful players. And they're looking particularly powerful down their left-hand side. But it's Waddle for Anderson. So the pleasing ebb and flow about the match now. Alenikov. Zavarov. And Demyanenko will hair down that touchline. And he's done brilliantly to keep the ball in play. Hansen knows too much to be fooled into giving away a corner. He could let it run. But David you sense that England have got to do something on that far side. Well, once again there, when he made that break, Demianenko, it was Waddle that was forced back with him, and once again he got inside of him and was able to put the ball across deep on the far side. No, I think we're doing okay. But we've just got to keep control of the ball and, and slow the tempo down and make sure that we're keeping possession and that we're playing into these front people's feet. If you've just joined us, and I'm sure a lot of people are at this time of the day, half an hour gone and England are holding the Soviet Union goalless here in Tbilisi. And the significant incidents really to this point, a penalty that England didn't get when Gary Lineker seemed to be felled by Dasayev, the Soviet goalkeeper, and a penalty missed by the Soviet Union when Chivadze hit the left-hand post of Peter Schultz. But here's Zavarov, and he passed when, had he been a little more aware of his position, he could have let the ball run on and gone on towards goal himself. Put away well by Mark Wright. Bugnov. Everything ahead of him. The Soviet central defender. Handsome in quickly on Gotsmanov who then gives away the free kick for a push on Gordon Cowans. Bobby Robson has said that Steve Hodge will be used at some point in the game. Santum, Beardsley, blocked by Chivadze, won back by Wilkins. Butcher saw Hoddle checking out on the far side. It's not natural for Glenn Hoddle to want to play too wide. He's picked out Lineker who now needs some support, and it comes in turn from Hoddle. Waddle's waiting on the far post from Hoddle's viewpoint. And he jumps, coming in over the top of Kuznetsov. Chris Waddle, who's scored in his last four First Division games for Spurs. 
when the build-up is slower, like the previous occasion, and they have to, in the end, finish up with a high cross, that's the occasion when the type of system that England are playing lets themselves down. In early play, it's good to play defeat, but once the ball's around the box, a high cross is sometimes needed, and you need to send in the air. Well, it's a shot by Zabarov that was, in the end, a pass to Gotsmanov. And then Hoddle, the first to react. And at the moment, the crowd slightly turning against the Soviet team. They certainly don't regard themselves as Russians in this part of the country. It's Georgia. And sometimes those from Moscow aren't always well received. And Oleg Blokhin, European Footballer of the Year, 1975, and the greatest Russian player of his generation. He is a Russian. Perhaps waiting to come on as the match progresses. Kerry Butcher, who's been talking fondly of the goal he scored with his right foot for Ipswich against West Bromwich Albion last Saturday, and uh, lamenting the fact that the cameras weren't there. A header from Bugnov. Demianenko. Along from Alenikov, the running from Kondrapiev, and the defending from Mark Wright for England. Demianenko. Zabarov, maybe a shot here. He's got to check back. A best one off. England defending in numbers, and it's Sansom who cuts away with it. Wilkins. England working well as a unit then. Hoddle. Hoddle again trying to make his run in on the opposite flank. Chris Waddle in the penalty area for England, but Cowan's trying to make a late run. Rodionov, who was back to clear. Butcher. Givadze, the sweeper. Well, Phantom finds the free kick given against him. Ken Phantom, his 23rd international in succession, a continuous thread through a, an ever-changing side. Chibadze. Away from Anderson. Only as far as Demianenko. Although the crowd is uh, around the 50,000 mark, one would think maybe more, you can hear almost every cry from the England bench. And I would think, David, they'd be reasonably happy with what they're seeing. Yeah, reasonably happy. I think that um, we need to get hold of the ball and just stop it a little bit and show a little bit of confidence and a little bit of co composure in possession. Don't be in too much of a hurry. And. Um, the other point at this time is that Wilkins is sitting rather deep and they're making one or two runs off him in the middle of the field. He's probably not the best marker, although he's a good holding player. The applause for the work of Bubnoff. Showing a good touch on the ground to get the better of Gary Lineker. Here's Wilkins. Anderson. Wobble, who has operated with a fair amount of freedom from one flank to the other. Beardsley. Now Wilkins. A surge of acceleration and no final ball to please him. 
Well, the number five shirt for Mexico certainly isn't decided who will wear it yet for sure. And Mark Wright, another opportunity to stake his claim tonight after a rather unhappy match in Egypt. Gotsmanov, who won the penalty, but Chivadze missed. Here's Waddle. Waddle found himself in a central position for England. At the moment, there's no one really wide on the other side. Petronov. Rodionov. The hard running, battling forward for Spartak of Moscow. was the top scorer in the Soviet Supreme League two seasons ago. The top scorer last year, Oleg Protasov, who broke the scoring record, in fact, is out of the side injured at the moment, although there are great hopes that he will be fit for Mexico. He played a league game at the weekend. Oh my, no! That was ambitious. It's run all the way on for Demianenko. Clearing header from Wilkins. And the tackle from Ray Wilkins with great determination too. She bats there. Some six minutes of the first half remaining. Zabarov. Rubnov finding more time to join in coming forward. In this policy, rather to retreat and hope to pick off passes rather than win the ball with stern tackling. Alenikov. Bethanov. England hoping to keep their marking tight in the face of the player attacking them with the ball, who is Bethanov. And Samson is there. Savarov. And Ladykov. Soviets keeping the ball neatly. But England forcing them to waste the final pass. We're certainly back in the spaces. Uh, as only Beardsley and Linnick are up, up the front, Waddle's working hard to get back in still spaces to stop the, um, the Russians joining in. But um, what may happen is that we isolate Beardsley and Linnick, and that'll be a problem for us because Cowans and Wilkins aren't making the runs to support. Five minutes of the first half remaining, and England holding the Soviet Union in their own backyard, so to speak. So this is the first full international in this stadium for exactly a year. Austria were the last visitors and they were beaten 2-0. Beardsley. She had to concern that he might have had to prevent a corner with the ball dropping off Kuznetsov. And showing his quality there. Helped by Lenikov. Demianenko. Good running to make himself available from uh, Kondratiev. I'm sure the crowd would hope that Oleg Blokin would be used in the second half. But they're saying here that he's in a similar stage of his career to Kenny Dalgleish. He has the quality, but perhaps not the legs anymore. Tantum finding himself forward. All a little flat for England. And Tantum on a pitch that's quite well grassed, but not over flat. And the ball taking a bobble from time to time. It was noticeable in training. Both sides have had the opportunity to train on the surface. It's not always easy to strike the pass. Hoddle. Oh. 
of Demianenko. While England are into the uh, last quarter, really, of a hard season, the Soviet season has only just begun. There's been four league matches for each club. This time it's Cowan's turn to miss Bantam. Bantam. Lineker told to hold it, and then when he picked his pass, he rather showed his intention, and got man off. Shilton hesitated to make his way back and wasn't put to the test by Sege Gottsman off the scorer of the first Soviet Union goal at Wembley in 1984 yeah, I mean that move came about as a result of two miscontrolled uh, balls by England players really due to bobbles and then a quick early pass uh, to set him away down the right hand side England do get to half time with a, a goal of score line. I would think they would be very satisfied. But certainly there have been some warning side signs from the Soviet play with their speed on the break and their ability to support the forward player when he is found. Davarov. tight in there for England and Wilkins runs out of room could use that to their advantage if they can sustain their performance and add to the frustrations of the home supporters. We're inside the final minute of the first 45. The Soviets have certainly upped the gear from the first 15 minutes when they were decidedly edgy. They've, they've come on stronger, they've marked it a little tighter and they made it more difficult for England to make the passes. And out of your picture, Steve Hodge is up and warming up, maybe to come on for the second half. But the first half has come to an end. No goals, two penalty incidents, one not given when Gary Lineker went down, one given for a foul by Anderson on Gotsmanov, but missed by Chibadze. We'll take a break and then join Brian Moore and Kevin Keegan with Mick Shannon in the studio for their comments. That's after the break. And welcome back. The player just coming onto the pitch again for the second half in Tbilisi. A score just in from Dublin. Uh, Wales are ahead after 17 minutes to go by Ian Rush for Wales against the Republic of Ireland. Let's just have a quick word with Kevin and Mick before we go back to our commentary team. The pluses you've seen in the first half. Um, I thought the bright start. I thought that we were very positive early on. But uh, I think it was probably sat back a little bit after. Uh, I thought Butch Wilkins has done well, and I'm his biggest critic. You know, at least mm. he, he has got stuck in in the middle of the park, and he's tried to knock balls forward, which is a change. Um, and uh, I, I think the two front players. Right, let's see how they go in the second half. We're back with you, David Fleet and Martin Tyler. Thank you, Brian. No substitutes at half-time for either country. The Soviet Union are in the same World Cup group as France, Hungary and Canada. And the former Newcastle United manager Richard Dinnis is here representing the Canadian Football Association, doing a spot of scouting for the Canadian team manager Tony Waiters. The running from Zavarov and a corner inside the first 30 seconds of the second half, conceded by England. Where Peter Shilton now will want to keep the discipline and concentration that England had for much of the first half around him. And it's dragged wide by Gotsmanov on the far side. 
flicked on. In fact, Bethanoff letting fly. And England could have been punished then. Once again, Martin, that attack came from Deminenko surging past Huddle. And it means that Huddles is forced to do defensive duties more than he would wish. He's not the man to chase people back in towards his own box. He wants to be further up the field, making the play. Well, oh, Bobby Robson, never short of a comment. And nor to Don Howe, who's been able to put for the time being at least the problems of his job at Highbury behind him. Bethanoff. Kuznetsov. Alenikov. England trying to hold a square back line in case the long ball comes forward. And it instead it comes forward from England and it's Gary Lineker with the sort of chances that he's been getting all season for Everton. And they're just that much harder at international level. Soviets are caught up in there. Terrific ball by Huddle. One of the few players in the world that can see that ball. Terrific ball. Lineker settling for the shot before he got inside the Soviet penalty area. Keep out there. Demianenko. Keep out has been fairly conservative in his play. He's not played a league game yet for this season because of a long-standing injury. So this is very much his comeback match. Away goes Lineker again, found this time by Wright, but he's very short of support. No concern on the Soviet bench. Movement on the England bench because Steve Hodges caught up again. Still with his tracksuit on and he's doing some preparatory sprints down the touch line. Lineker, he's given it away for England. And we've got Smanov. Unnecessarily fouled, really, by Viv Anderson. Although Demianenko does bomb forward down the left-hand side for the Soviets, they've got no natural left-sided midfield player. Kosmanov, very right-sided, doing the job at the moment as he was when he won the penalty. Yes, it was noticeable in training. Only Blockin had a really educated left foot amongst all their players. And you would feel that in a, in a country the size of this, that they have some very talented left footers. That's the stuff of the same problem we do. Unlike the Soviets to be weak on the left, David. Uh -huh. Here's Demyanenko. Rodionov, right tackle. And England looking to break again. Hoddle, it was Wilkins who was springing forward then. Back from Budnov. Bethanov. With an earlier ball forward, straight onto the head of Anderson. Alenikov. And Hoddle able to squeeze it back to Peter Shilton. There was a little scare when we arrived in the Soviet Union. Peter Shilton had forgotten his passport. And they uh, did have a reason not to let him in. Which in a football sense would have been disastrous for England. But common sense happily prevailed. Hoddle. And Bobby Robson is now talking to Steve Hodge and looking to make the first substitution for England and give Hodges first cap. Meanwhile, it's Kenny Sansom. Cowan's making a run into the box, which is, I'm sure, what Hodge will be asked to do. A midfield player who can score goals, Steve Hodge. 23 years old, in his first season with Aston Villa. And Lineker beaten by the punch of Dasayev. Collected by Hoddle. 
Anderson, a shooting chance here for England. And Hoddle this time, most uncharacteristically, giving the ball away. It was good to see Anderson make the break there. It, 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 the fullbacks have got to force the issue if they have the opportunity. Peter Shilton is the only survivor from the England team that played in Moscow and won in Moscow, in fact, in 1973. Right. Not just individual performances under scrutiny here, but the whole shape of England's team play. Butcher who had such a good World Cup in 1982. Hoddle, who was only on the fringes then, although he went to Spain. Wilkins. Navarroff was well read by Mark Wright. And the ricochet favoured England, and in particular Chris Waddle, with Lineker waiting in the middle. Wright has stayed forward as well. And Waddle couldn't deliver the cross, and he may have embarrassed his teammates there. The Soviet switching the play to what looks like useful effect. Wilkins can't go anywhere except out of play because Kondratiev was firing the way back to Chilton. And now, as Mark Wright might feel that he was so short a little by Chris Waddle then, it is Steve Hodge who comes on for Gordon Cowans. Eight minutes gone in the second half. And if you've just come home from work, the news here from Tbilisi is that it's still the Soviet Union nil, England nil. Hodge has that extra bit of zip, the ability to get forward quickly, which I think we'll find most beneficial this half, particularly towards the end of the game, legs may tire. There are some England fans, just a few, in this big crowd, as the Soviets have an injury problem. They play a mask at the moment, but some of the small number of England supporters have spent almost a week getting here. And it's better enough who has to go off. Malofayev, the Soviet coach, talking now to his uh, group of substitutes. He's named eight, but the understanding we have is that three plus a goalkeeper are permissible. Edward Malofayev, who was a member of the Soviet World Cup squad in England in 1966. At the moment, the home side down to ten men. Right. Waddle. Beardsley has gone ahead of him. And that was nicely played by England. Lineker going to the near post. And Chivadze was aware of the point of danger and took the sting out of England's attack with a calm piece of defensive play. Gotsmanov uh, filling in at the moment for Bessanov. With Metsov getting away with a piece of mid-control. Chivadze. The crowd urging him to contribute more going forward. And it's his pass and a good one too. The danger dealt with by Anderson. But kept in by Demyanenko. Alenikov. And number 15, Oleg Blokin. Looks as though, after all, he will get his 99th cap. And they want to bring on 
in fact two substitutes it seems Lipovchenko is waiting to join the fray as well Hoddle to turn Bubnov, it didn't quite come off for him. There's Litovchenko, who's a midfield player. And this has got the ball. But such was the fall of uh, Arlenikov. And he thinks it should be his free kick. So Rodionov and Betanov are the two players replaced. Rodionov who was actually on the field, Betanov who was off getting treatment, and the double substitution takes place. And here's Steve Hodge. Sanson. Hodge very much a left-sided player, as indeed Brian Robson is. But he didn't want to uh, be typecast as a left winger, which I think Brian Clough had in his mind that Hodge would be at his most useful for Nottingham Forest in that role. So there came the parting of the ways. Doubtless if Brian's listening, he'll put me right on that someday. Blocking is offside behind Mark Wright. Too bad that. Here's Gottman off. It's been quite difficult for England to track down. Hoddle. And that's the lack of strength in Wilkins tackling showing then. And blocking it away from Gutkin in the middle. And he almost got there first. Still the save. Very well indeed from Nikovchenko. Well, the two Soviet substitutes both involved there. After Wilkins had been caught, really sold short a little by Hoddle. Kondratiev couldn't make it. Litovchenko did, but so too bravely for England did Peter Shilton. Super save. Blocking really has lost none of that excellent pace. Litovchenko. This time Wilkins does win it. Hoddle. England operating in the second half with Waddle on the right, and Hoddle allowed a little bit more license to get into the middle of the field where he is, much happier, of course. Still difficult for the back players to pick out the two front men without a big man like Mark Haitley. Savarov looking to take on Wilkins who is quite happy to retreat and misplaced pass by Savarov Uh, tonight's attendance in Tbilisi, 62,000. But they haven't had a great deal to cheer about from the home point of view. Alenikov. We've had one hour of the match, and it's still goalless. Demianenko, who still looks a potent force. Kuznetov. Butcher unable to deliver the ball into the feet of Gary Lineker. Bobby Robson 
very much wanted to include Tony Woodcock when he knew that there was doubt about Haisley, but the timing of Woodcock's injury was very unfortunate. It was a late reaction to a knock on Saturday, and it happened too late in the small hours of Sunday morning, really, for England to call up another replacement forward who might well have been the player of the man sat alongside me, David Fleet, Mick Harford. I think we've seen, uh, whilst we've been here, the difficulties of a national team manager. He hasn't um, had the players that he's wanted. It was one or two players have come with knocks and strains. Not until yesterday could he really pick a side because of that. And uh, here we're seeing tonight, Beardsley and Inica playing quite sprightly, balls to feet. But we do, because we lack a big man, but we're unable to hit that ball into the box where we may frighten the Russians and put a header in where we may frighten other countries in Mexico, of course. So if you're sitting at home in judgment, do bear that in mind. Too bad, sir. Here's Demyanenko with perhaps a clear run at Evander Nova. Ray Wilkins providing a second line of defense. And we're quite happy that Demyanenko looked in field. Hodge. Mitovchenko's back heel. Zavarov blocking. And Hodge, who had made the original mistake, redeemed the error. I can't help feeling at times the pitch is thwarting the accuracy of pass. It's definitely not as even the pitch as it appears. Alongside me, a champion, of course, of the plastic surface. That is, as they say, another question. A flick from Beardsley. Played wide by Hoddle. Here's Hodge. That's neatly done by Steve Hodge. Phantom arriving in support, but Hodge gets in the cross himself. Lineker looking to lay it off with the chest. And Beardsley pressing strongly. And almost robbing Scotsman off inside his own penalty area. Holly Robson was placing great importance in the training this morning of the industry of Lineker and Beardsley to keep harassing and keep chasing and stop the Soviets building from the back. And they might be able to do just that here. That, of course, is a wearying process for the front men. I'm sure Mick Shannon would have some views on that. Phantom covering and keeping Blockin at bay. 99th cap, 37 goals for the Soviet Union, Oleg Blokhin. As the game has worn on, Chivadze Chiv sat deeper as the sweeper and the two, the two full-back players in the wide positions, Demyanenko and Kuznetsov, have just pushed in further. Anderson. Now right. Phantom away on the far side and Wilkins can find him. Hodge is ahead of him up the touchline. And then Hoddle's made a run down that inside left channel. Mistake by Litovchenko. And it was Hodge beavering away for England. And he's tripped. And England have a free kick in a threatening position. Still Hodge is adding a little bit of spark to the proceedings. He's got that brightness to want to go past people. He's got the inclination to go past people. And that's only a good thing when everyone else wants to just pass it. He wants to attack people with the ball. Showing some of the ambition that uh, our panellists were talking about at half-time. It's Hoddle with the free kick. And Butcher, who couldn't quite lean in to get a position to make a header. Anderson. Just past the 20 minute point in the second half. If you've been watching from the outset, uh, I apologize if we keep mentioning the score, but there are a lot of people coming home from work and it's still the Soviet Union nil, England nil. I understand you lost pictures just for a moment, but back here in Tbilisi, you missed nothing of the action. Lavarov. 
Itovchenko. He's shown one or two neat touches. Coming on to things from midfield. All the way back to Chibadze. That should suit England's strength, just chipping the ball forward like that, although Gotsmanov has, for a second, taken the ball away from Santum, who has it back and picked up Hoddle. Waddle. Who does remain the great England enigma, really, for that's a raking pass for Beardsley. Anticipating the mind of his old Newcastle teammates. Splendid work from Beardsley. And it's Waddle! and scored the first goal against the Soviet Union in a major international since 1979. And Chris Waddle, who started it all off, arrived in the middle after Beardsley had done so well. And how about this for a finish? Wonderful Newcastle United combination, that. The way Beardsley won that ball against the massive uh, Soviet defender, Bungnoff, was terrific. Good pass. Good attack, early ball in the box, well finished. Couldn't wish for anything better. It's an exciting scoreline in view of the Soviets' record. So we've reached the three-quarter mark of this international here in Tbilisi. And England have the lead. And Chris Waddle, who's certainly got his critics, but he may well have gone some way towards securing a definite berth in Mexico and repaying the faith that Bobby Robson has showed in him. Started the move in his own half. And a rasping shot to end it all. Oh, Waddle's been in tremendous goal-scoring form for Tottenham recently, and he lets fly again. Four goals in his last four first division games. And Bobby Robson, the look of a manager who knows that a gamble has come off. the uh, nice part of the facilities here that all the announcements being given in English as well as uh, in Russian. Gotsmanov. Little sign of frustration there by Gotsmanov. England are defending very well. They're getting behind the ball and have been doing all this half. And Mark Wright's asserted himself this half too. So the game is there for the taking now for England. They've still got plenty of work to get through in the last quarter of the game. They can afford no slip-up, but Chris Waddle has given them a smell here of what would be a splendid victory. His previous international goal against Turkey at Wembley. And in a sense, uh, with uh, no disrespect to the Turks, this is a real international goal. And just as there are smiles on the England bench, the frowns on the brow of Malofiev and the frustration that he must be feeling. Given every opportunity, of course, the Soviet manager to get his team in the right frame of mind and uh, organized tactically with the amount of preparation. But Waddle and company at the moment are in the ascendant. Terry Butcher trying to sneak up unnoticed on the far side as if anyone could miss him, but he gets the header back across the face of the goal. <laughs> Gary Lineker over the top, and they did neglect Butcher. Superbly accurate ball, and Butcher. You just wonder what Lineker's going to be like when he gets that pelvic problem cured. Kondrasiev, and it's Butcher having to do the defending now. Gotsmanov. And uh, Jordan giving the instructions. Such a commanding goalkeeper, even when he doesn't need to uh, come and actually get involved in the play himself, telling Stanton what the position was. Chibadze. Here's Alenikov. 
was suddenly unmarked in the midfield. England plugged the gap. Now Wilkins. And look at the space that the Soviets have given to Steve Hodge. Busy's he's gone outside him. Lineker joined by Wilkins in the middle. This is Hoddle. Sansom. We talked earlier about England's ability to keep the ball when they did win it. We were worried whether they would win it often enough, but they're able to keep possession again at the moment. Right. So it's good news we bring you so far from Tbilisi. England lead 1-0. A goal from Chris Waddle after 22 minutes of the second half. Lidovchenko. And Bubnov. It will be interesting to see whether the Soviets can improvise and change their way of playing here in their hour of need. They are very rigid in their thinking and their approach. And this time it's Lineker. Found by Hoddle. Had to take the shot under pressure. Once again, a superb defence splitting ball. I mean, Hoddle must have eyes in the back of his head. He sees spaces like no other player. Wonderful pass. And with Lineker's speed, you've always got such a terrific chance, even against the best defenders in the world, of getting behind them. But you've got to have the man to produce those passes, and Hoddle's the man. The last team to win a major international in the Soviet Union were West Germany. Back on this ground, in fact, in November 1979. But let's not count our chickens yet. Gotsmanov. And that deflects off right when it was passing easily for Schilt to collect in a corner. Stephen waiting to come on as Chivadze carries the ball forward for the Soviet Union. Chivadze, Litovchenko. Lineker is the furthest forward for England, and he was crowded out. England have to keep their work rate going. They have to maintain their concentration, and to do that, they're going to introduce Trevor Stephen. And it's Chris Waddle, the scorer of the goal, having done his job. Stephen may be just to sit in, David, on a wide position in midfield. I would have thought so. The, the Soviets are now beginning to build a little bit of pressure, but I do feel at the moment England are filling all the spaces and they're not able to create anything and, and to get a chance. You just got a glimpse there of the number 13 for the Soviets, and it's a surprise package, really. Sergei Dobrovolsky, who wasn't even named in the original uh, team list, He's a young forward from Moscow Dynamo. So the scoreline which makes happy reading at the moment. And it's uh, England with the lead given to them by Chris Waddle. Lockheed, a corner.
14 minutes left. And England to defend the one goal lead at this corner. Everybody pulled back into the England half. Most of them in the penalty area itself. And Chilton, in the end, able to let it go. It was a, an awkward in-swinging corner from Mitovchenko. The crowd is strangely silent. I feel they sense that the, the England work and the England covering and the England defensive work has been so good that it's limited them to hardly any chances. In fact, Chilton, apart from the super save that he's made this half, has had little to do. That save when the score was still nil-nil from Litovchenko. Dobrovolsky's hardly joined in the training when we've been uh, watching the Soviets at work. But they're not frightened to give a youngster his chance. He's had very limited league experience and they're asking him now to do a man's job. As the referee shows the yellow card to Budnov. I think Beardsley did well there. At least he got up straight away. He didn't make a meal of it. It was a foul challenge. He was tight into him and hit him hard. And the referee was quite right. Ray Wilkins then to take the free kick. Again, the butchers come forward, but it was worked short for Hoddle. Met by Santum. Hodge. Here's Trevor Stephen. And that's deflected off Litovchenko, it'll... Oh, the back pass has given the ball to Lineker, Hodge, Steve Hodge again. And the crowd hooting their derision, England almost presented with a second goal. But the angle was tight for Lineker himself, and Hodge couldn't squeeze the shot in with the angle not much wider. Good blocking by Butcher. And it's a goal kick, in fact, he deflected back again, got man off. So, Putnov, the first player in the match to get the yellow card, and part of a Soviet defence that had a hairy moment. Eleven minutes left. Right for England. The header from Chibadze. Ray Wilkins going in strongly. And England quite happy with the ball to be in that area of the pitch. Lineker and Beardsley have worked so hard. Alenikov. Was subdued in the second half. And Mark Wright, in contrast, has grown in authority. Hodge and... Trevor Stephen was away in space on England's right. And the ball bobbled, as we've seen it do a number of times, and led to Hodge miscuing. We'll now be very happy to concede possession to the Soviets in their own half. Stephen's sitting deep, just coming onto that ball against Demianenko. But we've got four across the middle of the field now. And I feel we've filled the spaces, and we've got a good spirit going amongst the players. And I think they're going to hold on without any trouble. who's looked very authoritative at the back throughout. And certainly watching the training, David, I know you felt that England had the, uh, the better technique of the two countries. Yeah, well, I've never had the real benefit of being able to, to watch England. It was an education for me for, for a couple of days. 
I was certainly very impressed with the massive butcher's touch because although you play against him in league games and you see him when you're actually seeing him, you know, almost face to face, he was particularly skillful. And I thought technically we were very, very good. Ray Wilkins with the corner. Butcher trying to make something of it up in the post. Wilkins again. And it's often portrayed that our players do lack the touch of other countries. Mark Wright making up ground on Kondratia, but the referee has penalised him, I think, for the angle of the tackle. So this could be danger for England. Chilton more aware than anyone of that. He's set a three-man wall. Blocking, passing towards the near post. It's right, he meets it. With Dovchenko. And blocking, coming second to Sansom. And England looking to turn, defending into counter-attack. And there was some brainy play then from Beardsley and Lineker, which in the end was punished by the flag of the Bulgarian linesman because they checked back, aware that they could have gone offside. They'd bent their runs and it must have been very close. He made a very late decision there. Hoddle. And Lineker again. And Budenov just did enough. Lineker trying to lift the ball past the bigger and uh, at least on paper slower defender. But Budenov read it well. I can't tell feeling that Hoddle's been a little bit more effective playing further in field. He certainly has got two angles to see the pass, both left and right. Whereas when he's stuck out on the right, he can only play in field. Alenikov. Butcher. And here is Hoddle. He's got Beardsley to his right and Lineker waiting to turn on that turbocharged pace through the middle. And now Steve Hodge. Handsome still full of running. Wilkins. England certainly not sitting on the one goal lead. Well, Mark Wright just taking a, a chance or two. And England working the ball back. Lost their sense of purpose, really. Rather casual, that. Slipping into the hands of his critics. But he has done well this half. Stephen. Delighted to press his claims again. Although he, he'd be the first to admit, I think he's looked a little weary in recent Everton performances. And he's been entitled to be weary the amount of games they've played in the last month. But on goes Trevor Stephen until the last tap takes the ball behind. England won in the Soviet Union, as I was saying earlier, in Moscow in 1973. They drew on their only other visit in 1958 in a pre-World Cup game, just as this is, when Bobby Robson and Don Howe were in the England side. That was played in Moscow. to read the Soviet uh, press tomorrow to see what their, the local people think of the game. I've seen France recently and they look technically better than the Soviet because they're in that group in the World Cup in Mexico with France, Canada and Hungary. England with just five minutes left. Five minutes away from what would be a famous victory Criticised in some quarters for a rather slipshod performance, perhaps in some ways against Israel, although any international victory away from home has to be applauded. The one in the Soviet Union is almost dancing in the streets. It never happens. Too bad then. And England haven't secured it yet. And uh, it's a lady cross who heads over. Viv Anderson got a back in jumping with Oleinikov. That collided uh, with Kondratiev. 
Sergei Elenikov from Dynamo Minsk. Sixty-two thousand the attendance. And all but a handful are going home disappointed. And that, that handful who made the, such tortuous journey from England, as the players thought they might have to, they'll be certainly feeling that they've been rewarded by what they've seen. A fixture that seemed ill-fated was only just over a week ago that perhaps everyone was thinking that England wouldn't come here. Anderson okay to go on. But apart from a short stop in Munich, the flight was direct and untroubled. England have been very well treated while they have been here. The hospitality has been... Demianenko. Alenikov with Hoddle, who got to put in cleanly. Wilkins, who takes it up. Now Hodge is in space ahead of him, and Sansom able to link up with Hodge again. Wilkins. Hoddle might be able to get away from Budnov. Stephen. England still has four waiting for a cross. Wilkins, aware that Obrovolsky was close at hand, and that was a little too abrupt between Hodge and Sampson. One or two of the tricks coming out now, such is England's confidence. Sampson, Beardsley. And still they win it back, and Peter Beardsley getting to the byline and the cross taken comfortably by Dassayev. England still has six defenders back. Beardsley will understand that this game will have far more significant than coming on a substitute uh, in his previous game, and he has done well today. He's done enough to persist with. I think he's lighted up the first division this year. Too bad, sir. I've got behind Ken Sanson this time. But what a comforting figure Peter Shilton is in times of stress and that was a moment of anxiety yeah well peter won't lack concentration even right towards the end of the game even though he hasn't been uh, you know overactive he's still shouting he's still calling he's still commanding that area all the time it's his voice that you can constantly hear on the on the uh, behind the goal played back by huddle after anderson has won the header Well, I'm too young to remember it, but they uh, they called Nat Lofthouse the Lion of Vienna for a famous goal in the 50s that brought England a win away from home. What would they call Chris Waddle, the Tiger of Tbilisi? I don't know, he's a sausage man from Calor, isn't he? <laughs> but it's his goal that has given England a lead which they've defended with some composure. It'll do Waddle's confidence the world a good, that goal.